my name's Chelsea and today we're going to be talking about what makes up the objects all around us. We're also going to be talking about how those objects can be affected by chemical reactions. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing we need to talk about is what objects are made of. Everything around us is made of millions of billions of smaller parts called molecules, which can interact with one another. In chemistry, we often see small repeating units interacting over and over again to form something bigger. These small repeating units are called monomers, and they're important because they can act like building blocks for objects. Think of Legos, for example, getting stacked one on top of another to make something bigger. In this case, each individual Lego would be one monomer, and the bigger structure that gets formed from stacking them together is called a polymer. Polymers are important because they can give an object structure, which makes it strong and stable. When we talk about polymers, we can have them all made of the same monomer, like this Lego chain with all yellow Legos. But we could also have a polymer that has many different monomers, like this Lego chain with green, red, and blue Legos. The process of stacking the monomers one on top of another is called polymerization, and it happens due to a chemical reaction. You could also have the opposite process occur, where a polymer breaks down into its individual monomers. This process is called depolymerization, and it also happens due to a chemical reaction. So what is a chemical reaction? Well, a chemical reaction is when one or more substances gets converted into a new substance. It involves breaking apart those building blocks and rearranging them into a new, unique pattern. There are five signs that could tell us if a chemical reaction has happened during an experiment. We don't need to see all five every time. In fact, we only need to see one to know that a chemical reaction did occur. The first sign is a color change. This one we can easily see just by looking with our eyes. Second is gas production. We can notice this one if any bubbles occur during the experiment. The third sign is an odor change. Now for this one, we do not want to place our nose directly over the experiment to smell, just in case there's anything harmful inside. Instead, we want to use a technique called wafting, which is a fancy science word for smelling. To do this technique, we wave our hand over the container and towards our nose, and then sniff whatever comes towards us. The fourth sign is a temperature change. To measure this one, we use a thermometer, so don't worry about it for today's experiment. And the fifth and final sign of a chemical reaction occurring is if a precipitate forms. A precipitate is when we notice a solid forming inside something that started out only as a liquid. In today's experiment, we're going to look at the ways that chemical reactions which cause polymerization and depolymerization can affect the way a substance looks and acts by using milk. Milk is made of monomers called casein, and casein can actually do some pretty cool things. Back in the 1900s, casein was actually used to make plastic. So it was used for buttons, beads, ornaments, and in fact, Queen Mary of England herself even had jewelry made out of milk casein. Now, if making plastic out of something that some people use to eat their cereal sounds bizarre to you, then let's get started and prove it. For today's experiment, you're going to need some vinegar, milk, paper towels, an oven mitt, a microwave safe mug, a measuring cup, a spoon. If you want to avoid a mess, I'd suggest laying down a garbage bag like I've done here. And if you want to decorate, you could grab some food coloring, sparkles, or whatever you like. First thing we need to do is measure out one cup of milk. Once we have this, we can add it to our microwave safe mug and then put that mug in the microwave. We're gonna to want to heat the milk up for five minutes. When it comes out, it should be about the temperature of hot cocoa. Now we're gonna to wanna to be careful when taking it out because it will be hot, so you might wanna use your oven mitt for that. I'm gonna go put mine in right now. Now that we have our hot milk, we're gonna add about three to four tablespoons of white vinegar to it. Now we're gonna to wanna to pay close attention to this step because this is where a chemical reaction is occurring. Once you add it, start stirring and keep stirring it for a few minutes. You should notice a big change happening. Once our mixture has cooled down a bit, we're going to try to extract some of the curds that formed in the previous step. So using your spoon, try to scoop up the solids and then drain them against the edge of the cup. And then place them on a stack of about four or five paper towels to try to dry them off. This step can get a little messy, so try to be careful. As you're draining the curds, try to ask yourself what they might be and why they might have formed.
When we've collected as many curds as we can from the mixture, we're going to take a paper towel and dab it so we make sure it's really dry. Once the curds are dry enough that you can pick them up like this, you're going to knead them together, almost like Play-Doh. You're going to need to do this kneading for about two or three minutes, so pause the video and come back here when that's done. Once we're done kneading, we can make our plastic into any shape we want. I'm going to make a star, so I've got some food coloring here to help me with that. So if you have anything for decorating, make sure to get that out now and be creative. Your creation is going to need one or two days to dry, so make sure you ask your parents somewhere safe that you can keep it without getting bothered for the next two days. Now let's talk about the science behind why we were able to make plastic out of milk. When we added the vinegar to the reaction, white chunks called curd started forming. This was the sign that a chemical reaction occurred. It was a precipitate. When the chemical change happened, all the casein monomers in the milk started to polymerize, and they joined together to form one long chain which is why we were able to see solid chunks in what started out as a liquid. We talked about a lot of new things today, so let's go over what we learned. First, everything around us is made of molecules. Second, sometimes small repeating units come together to form a larger unit. That larger unit is called a polymer, and the small repeating units are called monomers. Formation of a polymer is called polymerization. It has an opposite process called depolymerization, which breaks polymers down into monomers. Chemical reactions are responsible for polymerization and depolymerization. And finally, there are five signs in an experiment that tell us if a chemical reaction has occurred. Color change, odor change, temperature change, precipitate, or gas formation. Bye for now!